Today we're going to answer the dreaded question, keep or sell? It's a trader's worst nightmare pretty much whenever a new FIFA game arrives. We are going to get spammed with DMs and questions about who to sell and who to keep and sometimes they're not even the easiest to answer and it's all person dependent. But I'm, I hope this video helps answer that question for you on a lot of different cards. I might not answer every single card individually, but hopefully we can pull them together in a way that uh, makes it pretty obvious to you or helps you a bit for sure. I'm also going to talk about a few different ways you can make coins at the end of this video. I know web app has been a grind this year. It's been a grind for me. It's been a grind for all traders. Keep in mind right now, I'm running like polls pretty frequently on social media, seeing where people are at in coin totals. And honestly, the majority of the user base is only at zero to 20,000 coins. So if you're in that if, if you're in that pool, don't feel bad. That's where people are. It's really hard to accumulate coins on this web app version, and that's because EA made packs untradeable. So there isn't as much market swings. There's not as much happening. Uh, some price ranges are weird. So even if you happen to pack like a good card like Cruz or Lukaku or someone like that in your welcome back packs, they're not even selling right now. So it kind of sucks because that might have been your best card in the pack, and you can't even get the coins for them right away. So. If you still have those, what I would recommend doing is discarding those, okay? I would just discard those and try to get them back into your account when you can with quick sell recovery so you can use those coins in the interim. But let's get into it here. So keep or sell. Big question of the day. I'm on the popular page of Footbin. This is where you kind of want to be to be scoping out cards and who's going to be popular to start the game. What you're going to see here is extremely high meta. Like Anthony, he's actually even more popular than I expected. I know he's got the skills. I know he's Brazilian. I estimated that he'd be like 50K-ish when the full game arrived, 40, 50K. So he's got room to go up for sure. But let me talk about Anthony for a second because I think he's a perfect example. Anthony is not a card that I'm recommending to invest in before the release and when i say release i'm talking about september 27th okay september 27th the market's going to change a lot because people are going to have access to their fifa points and gameplay so people will slowly start accruing coins from there right now you're probably are accruing co coins through trading or some SBCs, but it's super duper slow so i wouldn't consider that the same that's going to change a lot on the 27th. On the 27th, there's going to be an insane amount of coins coming onto this market. Now, Anthony, I wouldn't invest in, okay? Because he's 82 rated. So with all those FIFA points being opened, I just don't see him sustaining his value, at least immediately. Maybe he will go up from this 18K price, okay? Throughout the day or throughout the next couple days after the 27th. So the 28th, 29th, maybe late at night on the 27th. But... I do expect him to dip a little bit before that. Let's see if I can find another good example here. Nunez is another one I really wouldn't look to do before that. They're, they're already low right now, so they already have a lot of supply. Renato is another one that would make me hesitant, even though he is super duper meta and super loved in starter squads. I mean, he's number seven on the popular page. I wouldn't recommend pre-investing in him before the game. Okay, they're just too low rated, in my opinion, to have to survive that pack supply. It doesn't mean they're not good investments. It just means you could alter your your idea to invest in them on the 27th directly, okay? When all those FIFA points are being opened rapidly by creators, by people that are loading up 12K, whatever it is, there's going to be a lot of cards coming onto the market that day. So you might get some great bidding and sniping opportunities there as well. Now, you might ask me about a card like Holland, because Holland is going to be in, let's see if we can find him here, there he is, he's going to be in ones to watch, it's confirmed, there are four confirmed right now, it's Holland, Richarlison, Sterling, and I'm and Nunez, I think. So those are the four confirmed ones to watches, which means they're going to be pretty overinvested in my eyes, because people all know that, so everyone's going to think Holland's going out of packs, he's going to rise a lot. And although that may be true, what I would recommend doing in a situation like that is selling in the hype of the event. So as EA kind of release and announce the team, you're going to see a big hype factor of cards going up in that. I would sell at that time. I wouldn't be holding those ones to watches beforehand that are known already. If you want to guess on someone getting a ones to watch, that's a little different. Like Rudiger is a good example, right? Armani, they have, they have a chance of getting ones to watch, but they're not confirmed. If they get in, I think they'll be okay to hold through. But these ones that are confirmed, because everyone knows now, are going to be pre-invested pretty heavily. All right, let's get into a few cards here now that I think you are actually okay to hold. Again, I'm not going to cover the whole whole market, but what I'm going to explain here is who you should look for to hold, okay? 
I think good cards to hold are going to be right now somewhere between like 25 and 75k in value. Yes, some might be a little bit higher than that, but you may not get, a, get as good of a return on them, right? Like if Mbappe is 850,000 coins, he goes up to 2 million or 1.6 million, maybe you're double your coins. There might be some better opportunities than that. Not that many people have that kind of coin total right now anyways. I'm not even there myself. I think I just crossed like a 250k mark and that's been a huge grind myself and I consider myself someone to know a lot of trading tactics, but it's really tough to get them. So another example of a card I think you're okay to invest in is like Inform Valverde. Valverde is going to get supplied, right? He's going to get supplied on that big pack opening on the 27th. It will actually be one day before he goes out of packs, but... What I really like about him is he's 65k right now. That's so cheap for this card. I don't think there's that many right wings that are so good in this game. I think he's actually really helpful for squad building as well. It is kind of weird that EA made it so you can't have an alternate position to CM when it's on his gold card, but not his inform. I don't know if that's something they plan to change, but I really dislike that. I think you should be able to alternate for sure on your inform too. But I just don't see him dipping that much from here. So if you wanted to buy him and hold him into the release, I think you're okay. I think you'll see profit there. Same thing with a card like Messi. If you happen to accumulate like 100, he bounces pretty much from like 100 to 140K right now. If you have that kind of coin total, there's just no way a Messi card is going to stay that low. Um, I really like those options. Let me see if I can find another one here. I do think Cancelo is a good shout. What really makes Cancelo unique this year is that he can play left back and right back. I think that's really awesome for squad building. He's going to make it really easy to get him in your team. And he's pretty much one of the best options on both sides. So that gives him a higher opportunity to hold his value there. So I would recommend him as well. So what you're looking for is a card to kind of pre-invest in is that like 25 to 75K mark as a base. Again, there are some that might not fit that, but 25 to 75K some of the best in their positions and for the price. So, right, Messi's one of the best in his positions for the price. Rudiger, I don't mind because he's one of the best La Liga center backs. Um, Vinny is obviously a great shout. He's still too cheap. He's going to be one of the best left wings in the game to start. So those type of cards are ones that you could look at keeping and holding into the 27th. But I would get rid of some of those other ones. I also wanted to mention, make sure you get out of cards like, I'm going to see if I can find a good example here. Perfect, like St. Juiced. He's a 76 <laughs> rated card, so there's really no chance that he's going to hold this value through all this pack supply, in my opinion. Again, he might come back near this price or he might rise afterwards, but initially when those packs are open and spammed on the 27th, I just really don't see him maintaining that value. So anything under like 7K right now, expect to see that dip down in price and then a rise later in that day and it's all about how low they'll go but that's why i wouldn't recommend pre-investing into those types of cards they are going to be good to trade with on the 27th so even on this popular page you can keep in mind and keep an eye on cards that you think people will use in their starter squad like tonali quadrado Cassier, etc and you can kim min jay he looks pretty fun you can look at cards like that and invest on them on the 27th or flip them with supply things like that but i wouldn't hold them into that date now, I just want to talk about a couple trading ideas for you here. I know a lot of you guys are struggling to make coins. Everyone is, like I said, don't worry about it. What I would do is I would look at marquee matchups as a kind of basis for some of your trading right now because people are completing marquee matchups because it's some of the few packs that are tradable, which makes sense. You want tradable packs to get more coins in your account, and these are some of the few that are offering that right now. So. Some ideas of players to trade with are like silver Danish players and silver French players because it's really helpful for this first segment in this SBC. You need three silvers, one from Denmark, one from France. Again, this one over here, silvers from the Netherlands and silvers from Belgium. Search their common positions and one that fit, ones that fit this squad. It's really, really helpful. This last one, England versus Germany. It's kind of interesting because this one was a five at the back formation, so... What you would want to look for, let's see if I can find one with zero position changes right here. None and none. Perfect. So I'm going to go into it here, but there's actually only one right wing back to use in the Bundesliga. So his name was Henrik. So he was like a good card to trade with and snipe. He actually rose a lot from this SBC. He went from like legit probably like four or 500 coins all the way up to 2K. But this 
SBC has right wing backs and left wing backs. And with the new chemistry system, what's really crazy is now if you play a right back or a left back there, they actually get zero chem. So trading with left wing backs and right wing backs is a good idea for this SBC. Um, and like Henrix is a good card to snipe. English players and then German players are also up in value from this SBC. So like a sniping filter that was really great yesterday was gold English CMs or gold English center mids in the prem. That worked really good as well. I think another one that was working was gold um, German players in the Premier League. So those are just some examples from our key matchups. And that's what I would just look to grind. Keep in mind, right now, you're not going to make 1k a card on much, okay? It's just so competitive and budgets are so low. That's honestly not going to happen that much. Instead, what you want to be looking is just grinding like two to 400 coins profit per card. And even if you're making like 10 or 15k an hour right now, keep in mind that's going to be really helpful as you start the game. When we look at these prices here, you could get like half your starter team within 10 or 15k, right? You get Chuameni, you get a Camavinga, you get a Quadrado, whatever it may be. So those coins can go really far right now. So don't get too discouraged if you're not making much. Top traders pretty much themselves are only at like 100k plus. And that's if you know like exactly what you're doing and every method and executing it well. So if you're someone who's in that zero to 20k mark, don't worry, keep grinding and hopefully this helps you. See you next time.